Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the SWAS NFL Week 6 Commanders Ravens in Baltimore. Let's go. Welcome to the SWAS. The SWAS. SWAS. Hey, get the SWAS. All right, like I said, Washington's on the road in Baltimore for this one. The Ravens are now laying six and a half. This number was at seven briefly. Those Washington plus sevens got bought up pretty quickly. Um, as far as the total, we're sitting at 51 and a half pretty much across the board. Let's take a look at the pie charts. And according to this data, uh, public actions coming in about split 50-50 pretty much in terms of ticket percentage. Over 75% of the money coming in on Washington, indicating some sharp action on the commander side. But as I always say, take this data with a grain of salt. So let's get into this matchup and we'll start with this Washington commander's offense. And this is crazy. I mean, Prop even made this graphic here. Ingredients to the commies offense. A rookie quarterback, a bottom five offensive line from last year, no wide receiver outside of McLaurin, and Cliff Kingsbury at offensive coordinator. What has the result of this experiment been? One of the most powerful offenses in the NFL. They're second in yards per play, fifth in success rate, first in EPA, third in overall offensive DVOA. Jaden Daniels, amongst 30 qualified quarterbacks, is second in yards per pass attempt, first in completion percentage, fourth in passer rating. And if you look at the Ravens' defensive numbers, specifically against the pass, you might think that's just going to continue. We've seen Baltimore get cooked through the air several times this year. In weeks one and two, they were allowing over 283 passing yards per game, 8.6 yards per attempt, almost a 60% success rate per drop back, 98.3 average passer rating. Then they got cooked again last week on the road in Cincinnati. I mean, Joe Burrow did whatever he wanted up until that interception at the end that cost them the game. 392 yards through the air, over 10 yards per attempt, a 137 passer rating. So we've seen this Ravens pass defense get cooked a number of times this year. Here are their numbers on the season. I mean, they're 27th in the NFL in yards per pass attempts, uh, 19th in success rate per drop back, 25th in EPA, 16th in DVOA. So how do they match up against Jaden Daniels and the Washington passing attack? Well, the Ravens run a lot of cover six and a lot of cover four, first and eighth in frequency in those two coverages. Jaden Daniels, shocker. Excellent numbers against both. Against cover sixth, tenth, second, and sixth. Against cover four, first, second, and tenth. So in terms of coverages, no concerns here for Jaden Daniels. And if you're worried about a rookie quarterback going out on the road, hostile crowd, you know, hostile environment, look at these numbers. Jaden Daniels in his three road games. Well, this is actually the Washington passing numbers. Um, in their three road games, 223.7 passing yards per game. Okay, that's whatever. 8.7 yards per attempt, 84.8% success rate. 50% success rate is considered excellent. 84.8% success rate per drop back, an average passer rating of 110.3. So he's been excellent throwing the ball on the road so far this year. In fact, last week against Cleveland was the first time we really saw the Washington passing attack not look perfect. Uh, he had 236 yards passing in the game, 8.4 yards per attempt. That looks good. Success rate down at 39%, passer rating down at 78.9. So this was the first time we've seen this commander's passing attack stutter a bit. Uh, they still ended up winning that game huge because Cleveland's offense is just abysmal and Washington was able to run the ball in that game. The question is, what does Jaden Daniels look like when he doesn't have run support? Because we haven't seen that yet. The run game's always been there for him. Well, it's probably not going to be there in this one. Baltimore has been insane against the run this year. They're allowing just 60.8 rushing yards per game, 3.1 yards per carry, success rate all the way down near 25%. This has been by far the best run defense in the NFL. First in yards per carry allowed, first in success rate, fifth in EPA, third in run defense DVOA. Now, no question the Washington rushing attack has been excellent this year. It's been a bit better in their home games though. In their two home games against the Giants and Cleveland, 216 rushing yards per game, 6.4 yards per carry look at their numbers in their three road games down to 155 yards per game just 4.9 yards per carry so yards per carry drops from 6.4 to 4.9 now you might be looking at these numbers thinking well kyle these are still good okay it's not 6.4 yards per carry but it's still 4.9 these are still solid rushing numbers and you're right these are still solid rushing numbers but look at the defenses tampa bay cincinnati arizona three terrible run defenses and on that note look at the defenses they've seen in terms of epa per drop back bucks 20th giants 18th Bengals 29th cardinals 27th browns 16th look by no means am i trying to take credit away from Jaden daniels what he's doing is is truly nuts i don't know if we've ever even seen anything like it 
to be honest. So I'm not trying to take credit away, but I do think it is important to point out that he's had a little bit of an easy road in terms of the defenses that he's seen, and he's never been put in a situation where he doesn't have run support. He's going to be put in that situation in this game. Washington's offensive line, 12th in adjusted line yards, 25th in run blocking grade, 8th in yards before contact. Look at Baltimore's defensive front against the run, third, first, and fifth. So like I said, we haven't seen Jaden Daniels in a situation where the run game isn't, isn't there for him, and that's what we're going to see in this game. And if you're thinking, oh, well, Kyle, Jaden Daniels will just use his legs. He'll just make plays on the ground. Of course he will, but Baltimore's actually been really good in that department as well against Mahomes and Allen, and I know Mahomes isn't mobile to the point of Josh Allen, Josh Allen or Jaden Daniels, but still against these two guys, just seven carries, 24 rushing yards, three yards per carry. Yes, I'm aware that Jaden Daniels' athleticism is not really comparable to Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen in terms of running the ball, but still it's good to see if you're a Ravens fan that you haven't had problems with quarterbacks running the football so far this year. So I really think this is a tough spot for the Washington offense. And I know that sounds crazy to say because they've looked so good, but this Ravens defense is fully capable of taking the run game away and forcing Jaden Daniels to make throws on this Ravens secondary, which yeah, we've seen them get cooked a little bit this year. They're still playmakers on that secondary. Marcus Williams, Kyle Hamilton, Marlon Humphrey may not play, by the way. He was in he was seen in a walking boot. He's listed as questionable. Apparently, John Harbaugh is saying he looks good to go. I mean, who can who, who knows what that means? Uh, he's officially listed as questionable. So we obviously we'd like to know if Marlon Humphrey's gonna play, but still as a whole. I think the Ravens defense is equipped to give Jaden Daniels some problems. But what about the other side? We got the Ravens offense, which looks excellent. In their last three games, they're averaging 34.7 points per game, 7.6 yards per play, almost a 53% success rate as a team. They're leading the NFL in offensive DVOA, sitting at first, first in yards per play, third in success rate, second in EPA, elite rushing numbers, elite passing numbers, and they're matched up against a Washington defense that is just not. I mean, they're on the other end of the spectrum here, 26 in yards per play. 24th in success rate, 27th in EPA, 24th in DVOA. Lamar Jackson should not have problems making throws on this Washington defense. Uh, he even seems to be finding his groove as well. In weeks one and two, the games they lost, 260 passing yards per game, 7.1 yards per attempt, an average passer rating of 88.6. Look at the last three weeks, 229, nine yards per pass attempt, a 130.8 average passer rating. So he's been elite throwing the ball recently, and we already talked about the Washington pass defense. Now, yes, we do have to mention that they played well last week. Uh, you can see their numbers against the pass in the first four games, an average passer rating allowed 119.7, 7.9 yards per attempt, 56.5% success rate per drop back. Last week versus Cleveland, yeah, excellent pass defense numbers. I mean, Deshaun Watson couldn't do anything. Twitter was actually pretty hilarious about that, making fun of Deshaun Watson in this game. But we need to point out that the Browns are setting records in terms of a poor passing offense. They're on the same level as Bryce Young and the Panthers passing attack from last year. It's truly record setting bad. Obviously, we can't compare the Browns passing attack to the Ravens passing attack. That's sitting at pretty much top five in most major metrics. Also, look at the bottom of this graphic. They're, they lead the NFL in yards per carry. Fourth in rushing success rate, second in rushing EPA, first in rushing DVOA. Washington, shocker, also struggling to stop the run. 30th in yards per carry allowed, 27th in success rate, 27th in EPA, 18th and run defense DVOA. Now, if you are looking to take the commanders in this one, you can point at the fact that they've been running some man coverage, 31% man coverage frequency. That's 10th most in the NFL. And the reason that's significant is Lamar Jackson's been much, much better throwing the ball against zone coverage. Completion percentage way down, yards per attempt way down, passer rating way down against man coverage. But Washington also runs a lot of two deep safety looks, 59.6% two high safety looks. Also 23.4% cover two frequency both of those fourth most in the nfl the reason that's significant lamar jackson has been much more efficient throwing the ball on two high safety looks completion percentage is up yards per attempt is actually down but look at the touchdown to interception ratio one to one eight to zero also passer rating way up with touchdowns probably have something to do with that but passer rating way up against two high safety looks and look at his numbers against cover two seventh in completion percentage fourth in yards per attempt seventh in passer rating second in deep throw percentage so lamar jackson has had no problems throwing the ball in cover two and lastly we have to talk about the baltimore rushing attack i mentioned it before here are the numbers you've already seen them here are the washington defensive numbers against the run you've already seen them they're bad baltimore's offensive line 14th in adjusted line yards but they're fifth in run blocking grade first in yards before contact washington's defensive front on the other hand has been getting blown off the line of 
scrimmage, 18th, 19th, 30th. Also, Baltimore runs a lot of gap concept blocking schemes, 8th in frequency, 7th in yards per carry, 3rd in success rate. Which type of blocking schemes does Washington really struggle against? Gap. <laughs> 32nd, 32nd, 28th. They really struggled against those types of blocking schemes. So Baltimore should be able to run the ball all over Washington, and Lamar Jackson should be able to throw the ball all over Washington. So there's no way. I can bet Washington, no chance in hell. I even think Baltimore's defense is able to give Daniels problems, like I said. So it's Baltimore for me. The thing is, I don't see any reason to rush this bet. Those Washington plus sevens got bought up pretty quickly. I'd be surprised if it gets back up to seven. Seems like the only way it could go is down. I don't know if it'll actually drop, but if there's a chance I can get a Ravens minus six or even a Ravens minus five and a half, why not wait? So I'm going to wait it out. I like the Ravens. It, it'll only be Baltimore for me. Um, but I, I haven't bet it yet. I'm hoping to get a five and a half. That, I'll, I'll pull the trigger at five and a half. If you want to see all the bets I have open, head over to kylecrums.com and click on open bets. You'll see all mine as well as everyone on the staff here. Also, if you sign up to Sauce Network Plus, it comes with access to the Discord and you can participate in the weekly betting league. $150 on one of these trophies go to the winner every single week. So if you're interested, head over to the website and sign up. Live shows, college football Saturday, 10 a.m. up to kickoff. We'll go through as many games as we can uh, right up to kickoff. NFL Sunday, 11 a.m. up to kickoff. Same thing. We'll go through the whole board. If you're able to make it, we'd love to see you in the comments. Let's have ourselves a nice week six. Please remember to bet responsibly. Talk in the Discord.